Greetings, my fellow clan folk. Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to the very first episode of a tutorial series of clan folk. Episode 1 Learn to Play. Before I start, I just want to explain what this game is a little bit. It is a clan house Scottish town builder, sort of. Um, the idea of the game is you are, as you can see in the top right, in the 1300s in Scotland, and you have a little fief to develop on your own, you and your family. Uh, you will have other clansmen from other, well, clansmen is kind of clan folk. Let's go with clan folk. Clansmen has a connotation. Other clan folk from other Scottish clans that come to visit you and trade and the like, uh, renting beds or being hired out for work or, you know, just just trading goods. And what you're trying to do is survive. That's it. Survive the cold, survive starvation, um, and flourish if possible. I did run a little poll, or not poll, I did run a little raffle before we started, so I already have the six starting characters. In this series, it's a tutorial series, so what I'm going to be doing is covering all the game mechanics. So right at the start, there is a few different types of scenarios that you can play. But before you even get there, you have world settings. So you can lower and raise these world settings uh, to change the map generation. And I'm going to talk about them very briefly. So lakes gives you things like reeds, uh, fish and eel. So it's a food source. Fish and eel can be overfished from lakes. So it's important to have at least a few. Uh, mountains, in my opinion, are even more important because mountains give you iron and gold. Although gold is not really used in the game yet but iron is used kind of everywhere. So if you don't have a lot of mountains, you're gonna have to trade for your iron or iron tools or iron like goods like nails. Mountains are probably pretty important. Forests, in my opinion, are a lot less important. Um, and hear me out. It's because the game does allow you to plant trees. So having a decent amount of initial force is very helpful, but once you have the manpower to plant your own forests, you can forest the entire map. So a high level of starting forests might give you a lot of timber early on, but it doesn't really matter late game. So I'm going to lower this to negative one. Uh, grasslands is more useful. Grasslands is used for hay, straw, flax, oats. Um, oats leading to oat bread and then flax to linen and then s straw and hay for building materials. So grasslands, in my opinion, is kind of important. Um, again, you can plant your own grasses and you can do farming, but it does help to get off the ground when you have uh, an avail a large amount of available grasslands. And then wildlife. Uh, wildlife is kind of a wild card because you can make clothing and feed yourself without having to go hunting for wildlife. So I'm going to set that to one and mountains up to two. It's going to be mountainous, which is kind of weird because we're in the Scottish Islands, which is more like rolling green hills, but whatever. And then, of course, there's this seed here. And then if you build world, it takes all of your inputs and throws a world together for you. So we'll see what we get. So taking a look here, the things that you want to focus on for map generation, if you're trying to min-max this, ideally is to have some nice flat terrain. So these are these here are trees. This, of course, are lakes. And then the mountains are the tan things. You don't want to have to clear a lot of trees to build early on because you're not going to have an axe. You're not going to be able to do the land clearing. So what you want is uh, flat plains that are open and available for you to build, and ideally a mountain nearby because mountains can be used to keep your food fresh. And it can also be quick shelter, although I don't really advise it, but you can do it anyway. Um, so I'm going to do new map one time here, just a new seed. And what I'm looking for is like a nice, um, a nice little mountain area nearby. Okay, definitely not this one. And then a lake nearby. And when you start the game, you're going to start next to a lake, generally speaking. Wow. Okay. Uh, could we... Seed, give me something usable. Should have used Jenny's number. <laughs> uh, I guess this will do. Yeah, this will do. 
So then when you go build clan, there's a few different scenarios, and the starting scenario would be a fresh start. It is the easiest. A fresh start is grandparents, parents, children. But there's also much harder landsteaders starting off by themselves or orphaned children. That's brutal. Or something custom if you want to build your own. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is a fresh start minus one of the babies. And then you have a certain amount of points here, uh, which allows you to re-roll. So in gold, it's a little weird, but like a baby, for instance, costs 250 gold. Um, you can sort of design your fresh start. So that's what I'm going to be doing. What I'm going to be doing is hitting fresh start a few times until I like the traits that my people have. So that it's just easier. So like optimist, tire, tireless, heavy sleeper, heavy sleeper. Gloomy and lazy aren't great. I'm also not super concerned about the grandparents' traits because, to be honest, they die in the first year or two. Uh, it is the parents and the children traits that are going to last a lot longer. So here's something very straightforward, which is almost no traits except for a heavy sleeper, which is that they're not disturbed when they sleep. Another thing to consider here is their skills, passions, and dislikes. So a skill is something that they're particularly good at. They level up quickly at. And you don't want all of your characters to have all the same skills and all the same dislikes because then nobody is left to do the work. So, for instance, with this makeup, um, we have two people that do not like harvesting crop. That's okay, as long as it's not too, too many. And then we have gathering, lumber, farming, gathering, hauling, gathering. So in this case, I might have too much gathering. Um, that they only build up, you know, because because there's not a lot to gather. So I don't want to necessarily doom reroll forever, but I do want uh, somewhat of a workable layout. All right, so here we go. Here is something that's fine, I think. The elders do not like to cut lumber, but apart from that, we're good. I'm going to get rid of the baby. All these characters have already been renamed. Also, let me switch over to Wallace plaid, because, you know, I'm wearing it, more or less. And let's see. The grandpa here is going to be Glitch. Grandma Cypher. And then the wife is A-Shield. And husband is Kadath. And then the daughter is Can. And the son is Scorpius. Okay. Then in terms of what I want to take with me, I am going to take a ram and a ewe. In my opinion, I find it very important to get wool early on. There's sort of three types of clothing, or three or four types of clothing, and I'll get into it later, but wool is going to keep you warm in the winter and not piss you off. There is a lower quality, which is like sackcloth, but it will make your people miserable. It's better than freezing to death, but it's not great. I'm also going to take a cow as well. So I have three animals that are going to be raffled off to you guys soon. And then with the remaining, I will take just a little bit of uh, dried mushrooms. 20 dried mushrooms. I'm going to keep tutorials off. I don't need the tutorials. And here we go. We are ready. So right at the start... I'm going to cover a little bit of the UI. Up top is the outside temperature, the year, the summer, what time of day, uh, the lighting, the terrain, the move speed, the environment and local area, how nice it is. There's also fertilizer and moisture, and that plays a role in farming, but it's also in this overlay here. Uh, up here is your goods, what you have in stockpile. It's not everything. It's a, it's sort of a truncated list. If you want the full list, you go down to inventory down here, which of course we have nothing because we just started. We, 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 I mean, if you look at Kadath, he ain't, don't even have clothing. Um, that's, yeah, that's, that's where we're at. Uh, so here you have each individual uh, clan folk, your members of your clan. And then in buildings, you have roofs walls and floors and we don't have any materials to build anything yet but we will get them and then in objects right at the start 
the tutorial over here inf instructs you to put down wash zones and drink zones. So drink zones is for water and wash zones is for cleanliness. And then sleep zones, which is like a room world sleep spot. In terms of jobs, uh, we are going to want to collect stones, branches, and berries, and mushrooms for building materials, tool materials, and food. Uh, in the ta task list, these are all of the tasks that exist on the map. So, normally when you have a lot of tasks like farming or mining, the task list will show you that you have like 82 mining tasks and 46 farming tasks, so on and so forth. Ideas is more or less your research tree. So if you open up ideas here, each new thing that you can either build or craft or something like that is locked behind a certain requirement. So for instance, if I want to make a gravel path, I need to collect 100 stones. And then once I have 100 stones, gravel paths will unlock. The research goes down to, I know what this is, it's cheese. Um, there will be a lot more development over time for the game. Um, but at the moment, it is pretty possible within, I don't know, five to ten hours, depending how fast you are, to reach the bottom of the research tree. With that said, that doesn't mean the game is over. There is still a lot to do. Uh, then you have skills. So skills are what they're capable of and what they're passionate about and what they hate to do. So, for instance, Shield here loves to craft and has a very high aptitude for crafting. So I'm going to raise that up. Uh, all of their hates, I'm going to drop to the bottom of the list using these arrows over here so that they do not do them and it does not upset them. Only in an emergency would I consider it. So Scorpius is apt at gathering. I'll leave that at uh, number two. Can likes to farm, so I'll raise that up. Uh, Kadath likes to craft, but the problem is shield is so much better at it. So I'm going to raise Kadath's clothing crafting up and keep crafting a little bit lower. Uh, Cypher really likes to mine, so I'll kick that up. And then Glitch likes to hunt. That doesn't surprise me at all. And also is capable at building. So I'll put that up higher as well. Here you have your family tree who exists in the tree and what they like to do. We already seen this. And then there's clans. So there's four other clans that you can interact with by hiring them as workers, having them rent a room for gold or just to trade. And as you interact more and more with the other clans, you build up reputation with them, which unlocks additional things that you're allowed to buy from them. And this will make a lot more sense once I have uh, visitors. Now down here, it gives you the schedule. At sunrise, it's time off. Morning, daytime, evening, it's work. Sunset, it's time off. And night is sleep. And then this is how many days of food we have, which is one. Because I started with a few dried mushrooms. Um, if you click individuals here, you can see all of their information about this. Their mood, work, age, health, food, water, sleep, warmth, cleanliness, bathroom, social, fun, environment, and plaid. Plaid is whether they're wearing their colors or not. So Scorpius, for instance, has plaid on, um, as you can see here, whereas like Kadath doesn't, so he doesn't have any plaid benefit. A huge part of this game is about trying to manage mood as best as you can. If you aren't careful, uh, they will become extremely depressed and extremely unproductive. Mood and learning rate and productivity are linked to one another. So a huge part of this game initially is just not to freeze and not to starve. And then long term, it's to maximize mood so that you are the most effective that you can be. Um, up here is lock level. This comes into play a little bit later. When you act as an inn and you have guests and workers, you can restrict parts of your um, your compound or whatever, your town or home to prevent guests and to prevent um, visiting workers from accessing things that should be family only. Uh, and you can also assign beds and assign bathtubs and things like that. All right, let's jump into this. So right at the start, we're going to want some drink zones. So that is going to be set on the coast or shore of this lake. And here's the entire map. So as you can see, the dead center is somewhere around here, but I started next to water. You always do. 
That's why you probably want a lake near the center of your map, because if you only have a lake at the edge, you're going to start near the edge, which means that you have a unbelievably long uh, commute to try to get to resources in the opposite side of the map. So it's ideal not to spawn on the edge of the maps. And then we also want wash zones. Uh, this last wash zone I'm going to put over here because these reeds are blocking it. Uh, it does say that we want sleep zones, but I'm going to try to get us some proper beds before tonight. I don't know how capable I'll be doing that. And then it's also telling us to grab branches and grab stones. And this is going to allow us to make some basic tools. So if I scroll out a little bit and grab stones like this, it selects all of the stones and then we'll grab branches from the trees. Uh, if you cut down trees, it will also yield branches as well. So it's not just gather. You can just cut them down and skip the whole gather part if you want. And unpause and away we go. So now that I have a few ingredients here, uh, it allows a stockpile for ingredients. So an ingredient stockpile is just like general goods, sticks and stones, that kind of thing. And then as we collect berries, I'm also going to get a food stockpile. So I did start near some berry bushes, and we'll aim for that. If we take a look at the grass here, uh, some of this grass is just grass. Some of this grass is oats. So it's going to be really useful. And then this over here is flax. So flax forms linen for clothing, which comes much later in the uh, research tree. And then oats makes bread and porridge and things like that, uh, stews. And that comes much later in the research tree as well. So it's useful to have oat seeds and flax seeds for when you want to do farming later. But initially, you're mostly just going to want to get uh, grass for hay and straw as basic building materials. So now that I have a few items in my ingredients zone here, it's giving me what is called a work zone. This is kind of like a crafting spot in RimWorld. Uh, very, very basic, doesn't really require a lot of ingredients to make, and that will allow you to make the first stage of tools. Oh, let me also open up the Yoda can if you want that. One thing that I would advise you not to do in this game is don't over -cue tasks. So it's really tempting to be like, well, I want a lot of stone, so dragging a giant swath of stone but what ends up happening is it completely fills up your task list, meaning that it's very difficult to pivot your tasks without having to go subsequently cancel all the things that you wanted gathered. It's kind of annoying to do. Um, it's sort of the oxygen not included equivalent of like setting everything to nine, right? You just don't want to overburden your people with so much work that you're not really controlling exactly what gets done. Now we also have a food stockpile. And I'll stick this here, uh, just to store the dried mushrooms and berries, now that we're collecting dried mushrooms and berries. And then if we collect enough of the berries, we should see the days of food kick up from one to two, ideally. Ideally. I am going to raise the priority of this work zone up to ten, because I want this work zone done pronto. It looks like Glitch is working on it already. And that's going to unlock a stone sickle. So for five stone and five branches, I can make a stone sickle. But I should explain the crafting a little bit. So you can lock who's allowed to use this station if you want. You can say bypass queue. So what bypass queue is, is if you have like five different items in the queue, if you allow bypass, it will make, and you can't make the first item, it will just skip over to the second item. So it allows you to sort of skip steps. So if I had stone sickles and stone picks and stone axes, and for whatever reason I didn't have the materials for the sickles, it will skip sickles and jump straight to the picks and then to the axes subsequently. Next is repeat the build queue. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then down here, we can queue up manually by clicking or click the auto supply, which is do until you have. So I'm going to say do until I have three stone sickles. And then... Doing that, it will automatically queue up the three stone sickles um, so that I don't have to do it manually and allows you to essentially keep tools in stock. And that way, when they wear out, you just make a new one and you don't have to think about it. It's automated. And then the tutorial over here is also telling me that if I make a stone sickle, it unlocks something else. So if we go to the idea tree here, 
You can see that stone sickles right here, and next, once I make it, I'll be able to clear grass. I will also raise the work zone priority a little bit, and here comes Kadath making our sickles. It's also telling me that I need more branches. So for this, it's because I have enough stone sickles queued up and I don't have enough branches to make them that it's telling me that I have a deficit and that I should address this. And it goes away as soon as we stockpile more sticks. A branch pile. So when the idea is a branch pile was unlocked when I got, I think, 50 sticks or something like that. And what this does is most of the storage units that you can make in this game compress the amount that you can store by times three or so. So a stack on the ground versus a stack in a branch pile, a branch pile will be a lot more compressed. I think you can store 500 branches on a branch pile or something like that. It's very useful to have these. And then for some of the storages, they will also help to slow down spoilage or decay, much like a shelf in RimWorld. Put one of those down. And this costs uh, 10 branches in a little bit of time. And it will also have a capacity reading. Now that I have my first sickle, I opened up the clear grass job. So taking a look at the map here, there is no planning tool like there are in some other games, but I'm going to be probably using this mountain here as a way to keep my food a little cooler. Or maybe this mountain over here. This is a little bit larger. So if I'm going to be using this mountain to keep my food cooler during the summer months, I'll probably have my kitchen in this area, in this open grass field which means that I'm likely going to want to clear the grass here. And then it also allows me to start to farm nearby as well. You're gonna to wanna to start thinking about the high level concepts of um, how to lay out your, your home, your little homestead. So some of the bigger concepts I would say is keeping workplaces illuminated is important. It does cost straw to keep torches lit, but People don't like to be in dark rooms. They work slower in dark rooms. So having open space for torches is very important. But torches also have a burn radius where they throw sparks out. Which means that you have to account for their burn radius so that you don't end up setting your house on fire. Uh, other important concepts is that people don't like to be cold. So what you probably want to do is to group the bedrooms or barracks, if you're doing shared bed space, together with a source of heat. So having your kitchen, which will typically have a, a fire going, connected through vents with a bedroom will also keep the bedroom warm without having to burn two fires. So generally, I would say putting bedrooms and kitchens next to one another are smart, and then putting the kitchen near where you're going to have cold food storage is also very smart. And as we slowly develop our home here, uh, you'll see those those sort of high-level concepts in practice. So Kadath is making the three slice or sickles that we want. And now you can see Can here is clearing. The first thing I'm, uh, you know, we're just going to clear whatever's closest to us outwards. Now, another thing that I want to do is to unlock a thresher. A thresher allows you to process grasses, and you unlock a thresher by clearing out reeds here. So these three reed sections, I'm going to raise up to 10, because I want to get a thresher more than I want to clear this field. So we should see Kadath. Here, I'll just force him over. Go from clearing out this open field where we're getting hay 
to clearing out these reeds where we get straw. And if we open up the ideas here, we don't have a wattle wall because we haven't collected 200 branches or a wattle fence. We don't have dry stone fence or gravel path for 100 stones, but we're very close to that. We're at 95. And then we also don't have the ability to make berry bushes because we haven't collected 100 berries, but I wouldn't make berry bushes early game. Uh, it's probably more useful to actually eat the berries yourself. I'm going to go ahead and expand the ingredient zone a little bit. So we can keep storing. All right, so here is, I guess Kanath decided not to do that. Here's Glitch cutting the reeds for straw. Now that I have straw, I'm going to unlock two things. One, I'm going to be unlocking a serving basket. A serving basket keeps your food raised off the ground to re uh, reduce spoiling. A place to store fruits and vegetables off the ground. And I can make that next to my food zone. And then we also unlock the thresher, which is a way to process uh, grasses. And I will put the thresher there. Raise that up to 10 because I want that built. I'm also going to reduce the amount of grass that I'm getting, getting, at least for now. I think it's more important to diversify our tasks. I would also not mind unlocking some of these items here, which is more branches and more gravel. So as long as I have the manpower to do that, let's grab a few more stones. That should be the gravel path and then more branches. And branches are very useful because you use them as a fuel source for fires. So you're going to need a lot of branches. It's one of those things that you need a, a ridiculous abundance of. Oh yeah. Plan folk and plaid, of course. Of course. And of course my my plaid here is the same. It's gotta be. So now it's warning me that I need more straw for the thresher. So let's go ahead and clear out even more reeds. Clearing out a lot of the reeds that you start with is actually a really good way to jumpstart the amount of straw that you need. Normally what ends up happening is that you process this hay in a thresher for seeds and straw, uh, but it's a lot faster to just cut down the reeds instead. So if I come over here and double click on the clear grass test and raise it up to 10, or hit P or click the 10 for a priority boost, it puts that as a higher priority than everything else. So we should see Kadath and Can pivot from clearing what is possibly the future side of the kitchen over to clearing out these reeds so they can get the thresher built. Because the thresher needs 20 straw and five branches. And it looks like Scorpius is doing that as well. Cheers. So I've also unlocked gravel paths and dry stone fences. Dry stone fences are pretty when they're outdoors, as you can see, and they're ugly when they're indoors, but they're a pretty good way to contain your, uh, your animals. Stones, small stones, are very plentiful in the game, and there's only a limited amount of things that you can do with the small stones, like gravel paths and dry stone fences, so it's a great way to contain your farm animals, because your farm animals uh, will not wander away like in RimWorld, but they do require care. They don't like to be in the rain. They do want to be fed and, and watered. Uh, so early game, it's not 100% necessary to accommodate them, meaning that you don't have to build a barn right away, but you are going to want a barn soon thereafter. You don't want you don't want to delay too long, especially not in the winters, because if you don't build a barn by winter, animals are dead. They will freeze to death, most likely. Another thing to note is the hotkey for duplicating a blueprint is B. So if you click on anything and just hit B, you just get another copy of it, which is very useful. And here we go. We are getting the thresher. So I'm going to raise the thresher up to immediate priority and lower the clear grass down to 10. We have also collected enough sticks for the wattle fence and the wattle wall. A water wall supports a roof. A roof meaning to keep you dry in the rain and keep you inside. P 
People like to sleep inside. Animals like to sleep inside. I wouldn't suggest building a wall roof, however. It's, uh, it's a little ugly, and very quickly you get something slightly better in the unlock tree. So taking a look at the ideas, uh, I don't have enough berries for a berry bush, but we are pushing towards reeds, flax redding, straw doors, hay doors, hay roof, eel traps, and all the seeds as soon as this uh, thresher gets built, which is getting built now. So I just unlocked, having cleared enough reeds, I unlocked the ability to replant reeds, which is a good way to replenish natural resources. So I highly suggest if you have the extra manpower to put back into Mother Nature what you took. Meaning if you cut a lot of trees, plant them back. If you cut a lot of grass, plant it back. If you cut a lot of reeds, plant them back. Because then when you need them, you can have them. You can't plant a tree and urgently get wood. It takes a long time to grow. So that's why if you exploit resources, put it back as soon as it is convenient. Um, because it will help you avoid crises like, oh my, there is no grass on the map tile anymore, and now my farm animals have nothing to graze on, right? You want to avoid those situations. So here's the thresher. Some work environments, like the thresher, do not work in the rain. So initially, space is at a premium, shelters at a premium, and roofs and walls are expensive. So I would say it's pretty typical early game that most of your work places are just exposed to the elements. And if it gets rained on, people can't work there. Now, when it's rained on, we could do other things like hauling or gathering, but this thresher won't work. It's also flammable. Most items have a flammability. So make sure not to put flammable items near a fire source. Uh, but what we want to do is say, hey, let's use this thresher and auto supply 200 straw. So it takes hay from clearing grass plus work time and makes hay seed to plant more grass and straw. And then flax stems, uh, I am not going to queue up right now, but if we were to cut flax, which is here, like, this is what flax looks like. I find that flax is actually very hard to identify in grasses. I mean, it's possible. I'm able to do it, right? But flax looks like rather regular grass, whereas oats very clearly look different. But I'm not going to queue up the flax stems or hayseed. I'm not worried just yet about replanting grass. The map is full of it. And then I'm also going to raise this thresher up. I'm not going to set auto haul. I'm not concerned about putting the hay somewhere or the straw somewhere where I want it. And we have also unlocked eel traps. So eel traps are a reliable source of food if you don't overfish the area. They don't work in the winter. And I'm going to put two eel traps or three eel traps here on this shoreline. And these eel traps will help to catch eel from this lake and keep us fed. In the top left, and I know it's really small, there is a fishing out of percent, and that's an indicator of when you're starting to overfish things. Try not to overfish if you can help it. Diversify your food sources so that you don't overexploit. And now I have enough hay to make hay walls. Highly flammable, but very cheap. Um, hay roofs, again, highly flammable, very cheap. And then straw doors. And if we look at the uh, concepts here, most of these concepts are going to be behind building requirements. So once I'm in an eel trap, I will get a cooking fire, which is going to be very useful. And these straw curtains and straw windows are going to require me to build a straw door first. So these eel traps are getting underway now. What food can last the longest? Uh, so certain foods like bread don't spoil very quickly. Whereas other foods like berries spoil very quickly. Um, it also depends on the environment that they're in and how they're stored. And in the winters, you can collect jugs of ice and keep those jugs of ice in rooms to keep the room cool to keep your food from spoiling. I have not noticed if you are at least a little diligent that you run into mass food spoiling. 
It does happen, though. But most foods can be processed. Meats can be smoked. Uh, mushrooms can be dried. There's a lot of ways to make sure that food doesn't spoil. So here we go. Now that I have my first eel trap, here is a cooking fire. Now one thing to note about the cooking fire is you can see this little red ring around it. The red ring is an indicator of what gets set on fire around it. So if I put a cooking fire down, what's going to be really important is if I, I make sure that I don't store anything flammable around it. And I'll show you how to do that once it's built. So the cooking fire just unlocked, as did the raw eels. So here at these traps, I'm going to say, hey, let's auto supply the eels up to 25. And then we will arm these traps to catch eels. And I'll try to keep 25 raw eels in my inventory at all times. Just to trigger the um, the sort of idea mode, I'm going to stick a hay wall and a straw door in this spot. So here we go. Here's a flammability blocker. So if I drag a 3x3 three three square over the, the campfire, what that does is it tells your characters never to store flammable objects within this radius. That way we cannot or we will not spread fires accidentally. And then we'll also say, hey, make sure that we cook, let's say, 15 cook deals at any given time. The higher your population is, the more food that you're obviously going to need cooked at any given time. Um, but let's go with 15. And then we also unlocked stone hoe. So I'm going to say, hey, let's make three stone hoes. That is our next tool. And you can see here... If I make a hoe, I will also get a stone axe. And if I make a hoe, I will also get the ability to make twine. And if I make a hoe, I will also get the ability to make a poop hole. And, you know, we love poop holes up in here. I've also just threshed my first uh, straw, which made hayseed. So now I have hayseed, which allows me to plant grasses. So if you wanted to replant grass, um, you just go to the planting farm jobs. Just like the reeds that I started putting in, you can just put grass wherever you want. It takes a little while to grow. Once fully grown, uh, animals could graze on it, and then you can scythe it for hay. All right. I am going to raffle off the names of my animals. So for all of the subscribers active in the chat between now and when that raffle timer up top runs out, you're eligible and I'm going to raffle off a uh, cow and then the sheep. We have, uh, we have three animals right now. And then a blocker here just keeps things from being dropped. So a blocker would be good to use in like doorways if you find your door doorways are getting clogged or something like that. I don't personally uh, find the need to paint blockers very often. So now that we have a hoe, our hoe allows us to make a poop hole. People do not like to poop in front of others. Uh, so I'm going to put this poop hole kind of off to the side here. Another thing to note is that when people poop in the poop, poop hole, uh, they will be fertilizing the area, which can be useful for accelerating plant growth. And then it also uh, queued up stone axes, which I will get two of, yeah, let's say three. And then twine, which I will make up to 25. And I'm gonna queue the twine up manually and put it in front of the stone hoe. I want twine first. And then the hoe also allows us to do tilled soil, which gives a fertility bonus of 25% and a yield bonus of 50%. I don't think that trying to farm uh, on your first year is going to be all that successful because you're probably going to want to focus on shelter and warmth rather than farming. Farming is something that comes in a little bit later. And it also allows us to build a dirt path which ex gives a speed bonus of about 11%, whereas a gravel path is 15% or 25%. And then we've also unlocked sleep mats, 
So instead of these sleep spots, I am going to build sleep mats now that we have our first twine. So if we take a look at the ideas here, the twine unlocks standing torches, wall torches, and sleep mats. And then another thing we're going to want to do is to build a clothes zone. Now, I will say that it's probably not urgent to get clothes up and running in terms of manufacturing, but we might as well build it because it's just about free. It only costs some twine and, and branches. And then another thing that we're going to want to do is to go to jobs and gather clay. So the shorelines in the game are an infinite source of clay that will never be exhausted. You can never out dig clay. It's always there infinitely. Whereas uh, things like iron, there's a finite amount in the mountains. So these sleep mats require two twine each. I'm gonna need 12 twine for them, and then another five twine, 17 twine for the cloth zones total. I've also unlocked uh, animal bed and floor mat. So floor mat helps to keep your floors clean at doorways to the outside. And then animal beds allow livestock to lay on the bed and warm the room with their body heat. It's generally not enough, unless you have a lot of animals, to have an unheated barn in the extreme winters, but it gives you a little bit of a heating kick. Now once we get our first clay, that's when we're really cooking. And we're also building our first axe. So soon we'll have wood and clay, which are, in my opinion, probably the two nicest building materials to go with. Because clay can make things like brick and tile, and wood can make, well, planks and the like. So now um, that we have got our first segment of clay, we have unlocked a whole lot of things. We have unlocked a kiln. A kiln allows you to make charcoal, which is a very useful material. The kiln, unlike the campfire, does not have a f uh, open flame, so it doesn't spray uh, flames anywhere. And then you also have the, with the axe that we just got, the ability to cut trees. So I'm going to cut these, um, these five trees. Oh, and wood ash. The kiln will also make wood ash, which is useful for... Uh, the clothes zone tailoring and some other things as well. And there we go. Raffle timer's off. And, oh, well, shield. That's rigged. You already exist. Uh, Winter Blast. You're going to be my cow. And then my U is going to be Petters K. Where's the U? Petters KJ. And then the Ram is Aviator 10. Congrats. Making the axe allows us to make a stone pick, which is for mining. I'm only going to get two of those. And then if we go to ideas here, dob walls are very useful. Uh, they are very low flammability, and they're pretty cheap to build, and they're not ugly. Stone and rock walls uh, are prettier and not flammable at all, but they're a lot more expensive because large rocks are harder to come by. So I generally have my first structures out of sort of clay and branches and straw, daub style. So let's aim to unlock that, which is to get a few more branches than we currently have, about a hundred. So go to jobs, gather branches, and just hit a few more trees with these branches. I've also just unlocked uh, stone piles, straw piles, and tool racks. Tool racks is very useful early on, so I'll get a tool rack. Uh, because once we build the tool rack, it will stop people from putting the tools on the ground, ideally. And they will put the tools instead on the racks so they don't decay.
And then flutes, which is a means to entertainment. Oh, I missed a puppy treat in petting him, huh? Hey, dude. You not? <laughs> He's like, what? All right, we also got a butcher block. So butcher block allows you to butcher uh, animals that you hunt. And then a meat rack, which much like the serving basket, just keeps meat off the ground from being spoiled. And then barn doors, branch gates. So these allow animals to travel through. Barn doors allow large animals like cows to travel through them. And then small critters cannot travel through large doors. They can only travel through critter doors. So if I had like chickens and roosters, I would need a critter door in my barn. And then if I have larger animals, I would need a barn door. Um, cows can't fit through critter doors and chickens can't th fit through barn doors. And then a straw window. So windows are really important because during the day they'll allow sunlight in, which helps to illuminate inside spaces without the need for combustion, without the need to burn anything. We've also now unlocked um, with our pick mining mountains and mining gravel. So taking a look at the mountains here, there is, here, let me turn off roofs because it's much easier to find uh, iron ore without the roof on. So there's a little bit of iron ore here. So I'm gonna mine one segment there just to kick off the research. Or you know what? I think to the east is even closer. Right here, mine that iron. So there's gonna be some iron and gold deep in the mountains and you might want to mine shafts into the mountains to find that. But um, unlike RimWorld, if you mine out an entire mountain, the roof will collapse, the mountain roof will collapse. The mountain roofs, however, are very useful because mountain roofs help to regulate higher temperatures to keep areas cooler in the summer. So don't mine all your mountains flat because you lose the ability to have access to easier refrigeration. All right, looking good. We already have our beds. That was my goal for day one, and we got it. No problem at all. Uh, we still only have one day of food. I'm not concerned, because there's always berries and mushrooms to grab if we get hungry. What else do we unlock? Flute rack, so that just keeps your flute stored. And then we have general stockpile of just whatever. And I'll paint one of those. What other ideas do we have here unlocked? It goes quick, as you can see. So now we also have, because of the butcher block, we'll have fresh hide, raw meat, and that kind of thing. And then over here, wood ash. So that is going to be on the kiln once the kiln is built. Can you build supports for the roof like RimWorld? Yes. Yes, you can. Uh, so different roofs have different ranges that they need spans. So for instance, a hay roof can span a size of three. I believe mountain roofs are also three. And depending on the um, material of the roof, they can have a different span. Uh, so like woods span, wood roofs span further than stone ones. That's just one of those concepts that you get used to. Uh, the game is telling me to build a straw window to unlock some things. So I'm building a little straw window here. And this building here is not so much a building. It's just a way for me to unlock new uh, concepts. Okay. We have mined our first iron. We must have. Uh, that was over here. So Cypher did it. And that gives us the ability to do an iron ore pile. Storing our iron. Now these storage structures aren't that necessary to do. You can obviously just use the general storage. It's just, I'm putting them down anyway. And we can always move them later. Kadath is now done clearing out the possible kitchen area, the future kitchen area. And we are heading towards the evening. So the light level will dip. 
which makes it harder for people to work. So I'll give you an example of that. Low light, it's harder to work. So work drops and environment drops. This is one of the reasons why it's important to try to have lit workspaces. And if you look at all of the people here, they will all have uh, different mood lits that are somewhat temporary and they add up to their total mood. And the higher their total mood is, uh, the more they, the faster they work and the faster they learn. So for instance, shield here is cheerful at the moment. So gaining double experience for just about everything and also working faster, which is great. Work efficiency is now 138% for shield. Whereas if we find someone who's a little bit more sad, like Kadath, uh, work efficiency is 66%. So shield works over twice as fast as Kadath because of that mood happiness. And now we're getting raw eels out of this. Now there's two types of workstations, sort of, so to speak. There's active and passive ones. So a passive workstation would be something like an eel trap because it passively works over time. An active workstation would be like a work zone or a clothing zone because you're act actively doing the work when you're there. It doesn't do it on its own. So the workstations like this one uh, you can say to auto haul, whereas the eel traps do not auto haul. So the eels will generate where the eel traps are and they require hauling. The first thing that we can make on the clothes zone is a sack. Uh, think like potato sack or something like that. Grain sack. Not potato sack, because I guess there's no potatoes. But um, like a grain sack. You can wear it if you need to. It's very depressing to wear a grain sack as clothing. Uh, but we'll get five of those. And take a look at the concepts. We are waiting on, I would say, probably the charcoal kiln. But here, Cypher's going, cooking us up some eel to eat. When you clear uh, trees, you can also clear the stumps for even more wood. And it's a pretty considerable amount of wood that you can get from clearing the stumps. However, mushrooms like to grow near stumps, so sometimes it can be helpful to promote mushroom growth to leave the stumps in and mushrooms will grow around these stumped trees. But if you really need the wood and you don't really care for the mushrooms, clear cut it, cut all the stumps out. So here we go, charcoal. I'm gonna get my charcoal up to 50 and then I'm gonna get my wood ash up to 25. So charcoal is used in a whole lot of different uh, uses, bloomery, smith, uh, smithy, kiln, etc. Things that need to get hot. And then wood ash is used for tanning leather and for fertilizer. So that's going to be useful for uh, when we start making more clothing out of leather. We don't need a whole lot of wood ash, though. Um, but we definitely need a lot of charcoal. It's one of those things that you are constantly feeding kilns for charcoal. And I would actually probably advise to get multiple kilns. Um, not just the one, because of that's how much charcoal you end up using. And I have officially gathered enough sticks to unlock Dob Wall. So here's the dub wall. As you can see, the wattle and hay walls have negative five and negative two indoor environment. Dob walls are neutral. They're also low flammability. So if you do end up accidentally lighting things on fire, it's a lot easier to put out a dub wall because it's mostly clay than a hay wall, which is obviously going to go up in flames immediately. Um, so make sure that when you're building, um, if you are building like a work uh, a workshop that has a lot of open flames, you're going to want a low or no flammability building material. Whereas if you're building just like a grain storage silo, yeah, you could do hay. It doesn't really matter. Thank you for tuning in to Clan Folk, which originally streamed live on Twitch July 29th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com or the description of this video have a link to Discord. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel. I'll catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell everybody!